Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we have a ton of things to talk about. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So uh, first and foremost, yes, we are seeing a little bit of a flash crash in the market. And I wouldn't technically even call it a crash, um, but I have been seeing a lot of people, you know, really kind of panicking. And then we also see the individuals, you know, jumping to, you know, YouTube and Twitter saying, hey, you know, flash crash, everybody basically panic, you know. Um, in terms of the market right now, we are still seeing a lot of altcoins up significantly um, on the 24-hour span, but also even on the seven-day span. The seven-day span is something to really kind of admire, especially in in terms of you know altcoin strength, um, in terms of Bitcoin strength, right? You know, Bitcoin still looks pretty strong. I mean, we're down about 1.2 percent. Uh, we're currently sitting at about like almost 39k flat, and we came down to test about roughly 38.9k. Now, let's take a look at Bitcoin real quick in terms of the chart. Now, yes, I'm you know recording this a little bit earlier. Uh, this is going to go up a little bit later. So please just mind you that these prices are probably not the prices that are in the or like that are live right now currently in the market. Now, when we look at this, uh, we are still seeing a higher low put in place on the weekly candles. Uh, we still see Bitcoin trading sideways within this demand zone right above our 236 Fib level, all while individuals are getting panicky. Uh, I just find this comical. I, f I, I find it funny, the psychological factors around this market um, and how they really kind of play into, you know, what we have been seeing throughout the you know time frame of going back as far as like January. More so even like going back as far as like November, like November was the start of it. And since then, we've just been seeing, you know, massive bearish trends throughout this entire market, all while we are still sitting pretty at, you know, major support. So, you know, I still find it funny. Uh, where could we lead to? Uh, realistically speaking, we could come down as low as about 37K. Uh, between like 37K to roughly this FIB extension is where I'm really kind of eyeing Bitcoin. Now, with this, we look at XRP, right? So XRP still looks strong. I actually just made a YouTube video recently, uh, really kind of looking back on the macro view on XRP and really kind of addressing where we could lead to. Um, yes, I do still believe that we are in a bull run. I think that right now we are still seeing some volatile prices throughout the entire market until we do see that dollar crash. I think that dollar crash is going to be the thing that really ignites the bull run. Um, but we are still seeing higher lows put in place on even XRP going back as far as January, followed by that February time frame, and even followed by right now. Um, as long as we don't break down below like 62 cents, I'm totally fine. Or even, I should technically say, as long as we don't break the 200 day EMA, we're totally fine, which is at about like 56 and almost a half cents. So this still looks pretty good to me. Um, I would say overall, we are still, you know, targeting that 90, you know, almost two cent zone. That's the major area that, that I do want to see us back to and really kind of break above. It's going to take some time to get there. But, you know, overall, I think that the overall structure of this chart or uh, of this market, sorry, not this chart, um, looks pretty strong opposed to, again, the dollar. Now, Yes, I have been watching the dollar closely. If anyone is in crypto, you should definitely be watching this right now as we are nearing our local top. When that does happen, that will most likely cause a massive surge throughout this entire market as well as even, you know, stocks. And I actually kind of showed you guys this uh, yesterday um, on my video in terms of the US dollar crash and really kind of why we should be positioning ourselves in crypto. Uh, we look back at the dollar, right? <clears throat> now, this is on the weekly candle. March 23rd, 2020. And then we have, again, to January 4th is when we bottomed out on the dollar. But more so, I want to focus shift on the day that we started to weaken or the weekly candle that we started to weaken on in terms of the dollar, which was March 23rd, 2020. We look back in time on uh, Bitcoin to around that time frame. And I know that a lot of people were probably not in this space during this time. Uh, but now this is on the daily candles, by the way. We see March 23rd. That's when we really started to move in price. And this is what sparked that uptrend within Bitcoin. That's why I say pay attention to the US dollar because all the way to around January, the week of January 4th, we pumped significantly over 600 plus percent on Bitcoin. And we will most likely see a similar you know, move on Bitcoin, most likely between like 200 to 300 percent. And if that is the case, Prepare yourselves for a massive rally. Now, what is going to make my overall, uh, I would say, opinion on this market 
flip bearish, uh, that would be us breaking down below 37k, making a new low uh, prior to this February low. So roughly like about like 34k. That's going to call for a major warning sign on Bitcoin. So that's the, as long as we hold above, I'm totally fine with Bitcoin price action. Now, with this, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about how early we are. So I st I still see a lot of individuals saying, "Man, I wish that I was in this market earlier. I wish that I would have known about crypto a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, etc." Guys, stop dwelling on the past. You are never going back in time. You are never getting in on the ground floor of you know crypto in general. Um, in fact, everyone that invested into crypto even in 2017, 2018, wish that they could have went back in time and bought you know Bitcoin on the lows or crypto on the lows in general. I still see people saying that now. Um, I know people from you know March 2020, for example, saying that they wish that they could have went back in time again to buy more. Everyone is going to wish that they bought more, that they wish that they got in earlier. At the end of the day, you know, people are going to be continuously saying this going forward on in time as well. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, less than 5% of the global population is invested in crypto. This was from April 21st. When we look at this and we take a look at crypto, crypto is growing at a massive rate. Compare and contrast this to, you know, what we will most likely see when regulations are put in place and mass adoption moves in, you know, it's going to spark a wildfire within this market. It is going to grow tremendously in value. And that's, you know, pretty much a solidification that we are still very early. We look at crypto at a $2 trillion market cap, well, now roughly a $1.79 trillion market cap. And we kind of compare and contrast it to other markets or asset classes and it's just mind blowing how early we actually are in crypto, even though it doesn't feel like we are. Because, of course, when you look back on the charts, you know, you could have got this for this much. You could have got that for that much. Don't compare and contrast like that. We are still extremely early within this technology. Now, I do want to talk to you guys about a few things within this lawsuit. So. Uh, we do see here in this article, Multicoin acknowledges the Ripple network is superior as payment rail system relative to the legacy financial infrastructure. They then go on to say, regardless of the quality of the underlying technological infrastructure, concluding use Bitcoin or Ethereum. This is funny because we've actually been seeing a lot of articles like this around Ripple and XRP, uh, where they basically you know, say Ripple is so incredible in terms of its technology. Efficiencies are great from them blah, blah, blah. It's superior than the, you know, legacy system. But then they always bring up Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, and this really kind of solidifies the idea that like everything is a show around this lawsuit. I still foresee the idea of, you know, Ripple playing a key role, a vital key role in the future financial system. Um, and I've always addressed this and I've always talked about it, especially even in general for on-demand liquidity and line of credit and things like that, that XRP does power. Uh, we will see, you know, the foundation being built around some sort of technology that is, you know, on-demand liquidity. And I do believe that on-demand liquidity will be the, the key selling point for Ripple, um, as well as for, you know, the innovations that do go on uh, within the legacy system. And the reason why I say that is because we've already been kind of seeing that, you know, picture being printed for us with so many, you know, partnerships just from Ripple themselves this year with banks. But also liquidity is a key selling point right now. Liquidity is the key component for a lot of the, you know, evolution of money right now. Um, but also uh, we did see this. So this goes back to 2019. Um, now there's actually, I, I, I want to do a little bit of a, of a dive in on this. Now this is going to be a 2.14 minute long video. Um, but this really kind of breaks down a few things from the IMF. Uh, they're basically praising Ripple and we actually do here when crypto assets and blockchain are used in the context of cross-border payments, they can create new paths for value to more efficiently flow around the world. Now, Again, we do see here, so not only IMF paper site Ripple, Lagarde, you know, or Lagarde uh, talks Ripple, uh, IMF shares stages with Ripple. We are now also have an ex-Ripple employee working for the IMF and talking Ripple. Listen closely. Another category of fintech innovation and payments is where you have a whole new payment method. 
a new way for money to move that's different from anything we've seen before. So this could be crypto assets, or it could be a blockchain-based payment solution. And this is a space that I worked in at Ripple. And it's this space that I personally find fascinating and exciting. What's important about this category of fintech innovation is that you have a new way for value to flow. What's new is an opening up of the type of connections between people, institutions, entities all around the world. This is really important for cross-border payments. Payments generally flow pretty freely when it's just within a country, especially when people happen to have accounts with the same bank. But for payments from one country to another, that's where you run into inefficiencies and frictions, a foundation that can be legally enforced, a basis for trust. I wrote the payment rules for Ripple solution, and I can tell you all about how I dealt with that spinny wheel. But there is something very deeply rewarding about creating clarity and certainty out of chaos. Crypto assets and blockchain, when they're used in the context of cross-border payments, they can create new paths for value to more efficiently flow around the world. There are real problems in cross-border payments that FinTech can uniquely solve for. There are real needs. So that's one takeaway I want to leave you with. The promise of fintech is... And I do want you guys to understand what she's essentially saying is with Ripple, okay, combining what Ripple has built with RippleNet with XRP, the power that XRP does deliver, will essentially solidify XRP's position in becoming a global reserve bridge currency. This is a little bit different than what you would call a reserve currency in the sense of the U.S. dollar. A global reserve bridge currency will be the currency that every single payment that needs to have that transaction flow from one bank to a different bank, cross-border itself, right? That's where that bridge currency comes into play. This is also the main argument point behind XRP's true value. It's the idea of, of XRP being worth thousands of dollars or even hundreds of dollars. Is it being the settlement token, you know, between those two currencies, the bridge currency, the on-demand liquidity settlement token for the RippleNet protocol? Not only did we see this, but we also seen Ripple actually comparing XRP to a basket of liquid currencies. Hmm, only basket I know is the SDR. Very interesting comparison for Ripple to use twice in the same paper. Now, we're actually going to be addressing this and talking to you guys about this here shortly. But we do see here, you know, as the volatility of XRP approaches that of a global, uh, global currency basket, sorry, cost savings can amount to 12.6 BPS or $33 billion annually. Then we did see a follow-up here. Again, basket of liquid global currencies under the model assumptions. Also, I do like that this is actually including the cost basis of utilizing Ripple with XRP. 60% uh, percent savings for you know the global average cost. Uh, this is incredible when you actually look at it. Um, but also the reason why I bring up the you know basket of liquid you know currencies because this is with SDR special drawing rights, we kind of look at things uh, that are being shaken up within SDRs. Um, I really kind of focus shift onto this from August 16th of 2021. SDRs may be uh, becoming the new world order digital currency. Um, Again, a lot of these are buzzwords, if you will, to really kind of get you to click on it, but it is kind of the truth. When we look at, you know, SDRs, I would say that SDRs are most likely going to be, you know, again, 
a digital the new world order you know digital currency uh but when we look at this and kind of compare and contrast the xrp i know a lot of people try to say hey xrp is going to be the global reserve currency i'm not going to say that specifically just because that is speculation um but what we can say is that if we do kind of move towards a dlt you know powered system and we kind of look at sdrs and if xrp is a part of this system then that would solidify XRP's role as a global reserve bridge currency. And what we just recently seen was pretty significant. So here's a quote, quoted tweet. So I'm actually going to read the quoted tweet first, and then we'll kind of shift back to the tweet that I just showed you guys. So we do see our IMF delays SDR valuation a review. Uh, the IMF ex uh, executive board approved the delay to the SDR valuation review on March 5th. The review will be pushed back 10 months uh, from September 2021 to July of 2022. Um, and this is from Lagarde. Uh, basically, she was in D.C. this week. She met with Yellen. I don't believe in you know coincidences. And we do see there are no coincidences. All eyes on July and that SDR basket valuation review. Like I said, with all the connections going back to XRP here, it wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if XRP did play a key role in here with Ripple. Um, we do see here worth keeping an eye on as well, IMF. Here comes the IMF.org uh, article. We do see here in March 2021, the, this is basically what we just talked about. Uh, the new basket will become effective on August 1st, 2022. This is going to be pretty significant. Uh, significant. I would say keeping a close eye out on July and August. But we also see here, this could shake things up a bit. There is now a possibility that Christine Lagarde uh, could be the next Prime Minister of France. And shout out to um, Mylerman50 for this. Um, we do see here, you know, French PM uh, Castex announces government resignation if Macron re-elected. Re and again, uh, we do see Macron has eyes on Lagarde as Prime Minister. Uh, followed by, again, my warmest congratulations on his re-election as president of France. Strong leadership is essential in these uncertain times. And your tireless dedication will be much needed to tackle the challenges we are facing in Europe. And then followed by this, what powers does the French prime minister have? Well, basically, you know, we do see here it has, you know, at its disposal, the civil service, government agencies and armed forces. The government is responsible for, uh, to parliament and national assembly may pass a motion of center forcing the resignation of the government so when we look at this you know if you know christine lagarde basically becomes the prime minister of france that's going to be pretty significant um but when we look at this you know all of this kind of goes back to one key role and that is sdr the sdr basket like i said i'm saying if because it's not 100 percent. you know like i'm not going to sit here and say hey it's confirmed 100% or anything like that. Um, but when we look at this and we kind of compare and contrast the things in the past, more so, you know, focusing on SDRs, I do believe that Ripple has the potential with XRP, right? XRP will most likely become the global reserve bridge currency. It has all the power and the potential to do so. Now, the issue here is a lot of people were actually saying, you know, this could possibly be, you know, around, you know, XRP, or it could possibly be even, you know, Ethereum, maybe delaying, you know, the Ethereum 2.0 launch until this. I don't think that Ethereum has a, has a play in this at all. I've always said Ethereum and Bitcoin, way too inefficient for any sort of payment use case similar to this. XRP, though, because of that significance of on-demand liquidity, truly empowers the massive potential and power that it needs to have in order to be an SDR basket currency, aka the bridge currency between the SDR basket itself. Um, I know a lot of people were saying, you know, with SDRs, with Ripple it, or uh, with XRP, sorry, it could, you know, push the price to thirty thousand dollars plus. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, really kind of bet on that too much. Um, but if XRP does become the global reserve digital currency for, you know, the bridge, I would say definitely watch out for the price of XRP because I think that that would severely move the price in an upside move because it will be settling trillions of dollars a day 
in transactions. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. It's been Nick. Peace out, guys.